Hey, welcome back everyone. It is time for another new acquisition video. And this time we will be taking a look at the Burning Horizon Midtech that was designed by Sean Kendrick and David Mosier and manufactured by Chad Nichols Damascus. So let's get into it. Um, so if you're familiar with some of the customs, this is again modeled after the collaboration between Sean Kendrick and David Mosier and it's called the Burning Horizon. Now, um, if you take a look at this one here, this isn't what the typical mid-text will look like. This one has been slightly modified, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, but here's just kind of a basic look. Um, these recessed areas that have been modified will typically be flat like this. But uh, anyhow, as far as the specs go, uh, the blade length is three and a half, handles about five inches, so you're looking at about eight and a half total length, and then, um, Blade steel is S35VN, and then obviously this is titanium. It is the titanium frame lock flipper, and uh, yeah. So I actually had not heard or seen this knife until um, it came up for sale on Instagram, and I picked this one up from, again, my favorite modifier, and that is Maprique, aka Phil, um, on Instagram, and so he had picked this one up to compare it with his full custom, uh, as he does have a full custom burning horizon. Um, and really what the point of this was, according to, to David, who I emailed a little bit with, was to kind of create an affordable version of his knife that um, was more attainable for the average collector. And so if you're wondering what a mid-tech is, uh, there's a lot of different definitions, but essentially it is a, um, typically it's based on a full custom, um, knife such as this one and what they do is they work with a manufacturer They the manufacturer does you know most of the cutouts the materials the handle design um, And then it ends up in the custom makers hand to do Essentially final quality control in some cases they'll sharpen and then optimize and tweak performance Make sure the lockups good make sure the detents good and that's what happened with this mid tech um, apparently Chad Nichols Damascus made it and it's USA made. I didn't know he had manufacturing capabilities outside of his um, steel production, but apparently he does. And so he did obviously most of the work in the shop and then it went to Sean and to David and they did all the final sharpening on these. And then they also um, just checked that the detent was good, the lock bar strength, you know, um, the lockup was good. And speaking of lockup, this thing is super early. I mean, this is like maybe 10%. So this is going to have quite a long life as it wears in um, and, and kind of takes form making contact with the blade. So anyhow, this is what it looks like. It's a very attractive blade. Detent, lockup. Everything is, is actually really good. Let's take a look at the detent. Let me get my finger off the lock bar. Nice strong detent, which makes a good flipping action. Uh, nice and solid. And then um, it's, it's actually quite smooth. So this is on stainless steel caged bearings. And the full custom uses IKBS. This one uses a uh, obviously a, a Stainless cage bearing, which is good. I'm glad it's stainless. That was one of my concerns, but luckily I was able to find that information. So anyhow, um, comes with a standard pocket clip. It's a good size blade. Uh, three and a half is kind of my happy spot. Then the handle's a, a decent size too. I have extra large hands and I'm able to, to get in all four fingers um, and go kind of with a full grip. There's no jimping on top, but the, the design with this a large kind of finger guard, finger guard troil area um, really locks in the hand well um, and it kind of has that fighting style handle where you've got a bit of a pommel back here and you can see it locks your hand into that portion there so even though there's no jimping it doesn't really need it um, you know I'd feel more confident doing a thrust cut with this than I would with quite a few other knives so ergos are good um, quality is actually really nice it's actually smoothed out quite a bit there was a little bit of lock stick when I first got it um, but since I've been flipping it, that has gone away and it locks and disengages um, quite readily. No problems whatsoever. So anyhow, let's talk about the modifications that were done to this specific knife um, that you won't find on the other uh, mid-techs if you, if you are able to get your hands on one. So what Phil did is he took a Dremel and he created, this, um, he created these little 
uh, I don't know, little tiny valleys here. Um, he put this texture in with a Dremel, and then the Dremel actually polishes it, so then he went back and he bead blasted, um, and then he re-anodized the entire knife. So this should be fairly true to the original color. might be a little bit different if we had one with another one unmodified side by side. Something else that he did is, um, let's see if I can catch it light right, in the right light. But um, apparently, so this project was done obviously with David, with Sean, with Chad Nichols Damascus, and somehow Bad Blood was in on the project. I'm not quite sure what the business arrangement was or how this all came to fruition, but um, I had a, a previous Bad Blood, which was the Bad Blood Dreadnought, and that knife was absolutely terrible. The lockup was, had play in every direction. Um, and it's around here somewhere. I couldn't find it before this video, but um, it's terrible. This one is fantastic. Again, they didn't actually, I don't know how everyone's involved, but they had their logo on it. There is David Mosher's logo. And then on this side, there's some more writing as well. Made in the USA. This is number 23. And this was limited to 200 pieces. So this is one of 200, which uh, makes it a little more unique. Um, and it's actually been a really good year for um, mid -techs. I mean, some of the mid -techs that have come out this year, and in essentially in the same price point, were um, the Matt Disc and Fire, the Jay Kobach Quaken, Andre DeVille Butcher, the Graham Razzle, Les George has had a mid -tech out for a few years, um, the Browse Turpin is coming out soon, so um, a lot of mid -techs coming out this year, and this one... I don't know if it, maybe there wasn't enough marketing done, but there are still some actually up on the, I believe it's the Bad Blood Knives website. You can actually still order these direct. Um, and anyhow, so if, if you're looking and it is, what, the end of July here, 2014, there are still a few left. Um, and they haven't really seen a huge markup on the secondary market. Whereas some of the other ones like the Razzle or especially the Jacobat Quaken or the Matt Disc and Fire, um, they've seen tremendous markup on the secondary. But this one just, I think it hasn't received the same marketing or same attention that the others have. So anyhow, back to the blade. Initially, um, these logos here were kind of the similar color with this, kind of a, a gold or bronze coloration. Extremely prominent, um, created a huge billboard on the knife. So what Phil did is he took the blade he bead blasted it, which basically uh, really toned down this, um, all the, the labels here. And then he stonewashed it, and then he sat in the flats. So again, that's how it's going to differ, and you can see the tone difference there. That's how it's going to differ from one that you just pick up straight, um, that's unmodified. A few other, I know that um, Ironwood Blade Works, he is, he's also gone pretty crazy with the two of them, and he's, he's done some really heavy modifications, made it look really cool. But um, anyhow, so that's just kind of a look at uh, at this mid tech. Again, the the quality, the fit, the finish, um, everything is great. I, I really have no complaints about this knife. Um, you know, every everything looks good, and you know, knowing that obviously um, David has had his hands on some of them, and he's optimizing them, and he's doing the f the final quality control. Um, you know, you know, it's it's going through very very capable hands before they're sent out. So. I mean, I'd expect all of them to be perfect, um, assuming that as long as you don't buy it from someone previously who abused it or modified it incorrectly, um, which can happen. I mean, they should be absolutely perfect. And this one is, is perfect. Uh, Phil knew what he was doing with it. So anyhow, um, that's everything that's been done to the knife. Again, um, excellent, excellent value if you're looking to get your hands on you know, a, a Mosier design or Kendrick design, or perhaps you were quite smitten with the um, production version of the Burning Horizon. So anyways, that's pretty much um, my my overall thoughts on it. Now, kind of as a last, uh, I guess, exit here, let's take a look at a competitive option. And it is also a limited production knife, also with the bronze motif. And these two are in the exact same price point. Um, uh, anyhow, so a couple differences. Uh, this is the Zero Tolerance 801, and this is the brown wash carbon fiber. 
Again, same price point, but this is a manufactured piece and then this is a mid-tech. So the difference between the two is that the maker had his hands on this one and this one just went through the ZT factory. So Rexford Design, um, Mosier Kendrick Design, uh, this one has carbon fiber inlays. The KVT is smoother than the stainless steel bearings. Um, the detent, uh, I think the detent on this one, yeah, flipping action detent, it's a little bit stronger. Um, and then you also have a stainless steel lock insert, which I prefer. Um, so feature wise, this one actually comes ahead. Um, it's it's just, I mean, obviously you can see it's got more to it. And this one has been modified, so that does kind of up it a little bit. And in theory, it should make it more expensive. If you buy one and you send it to a modifier to do something really cool, um, you're going to be above and beyond kind of the initial price points on these two. So anyhow, um, this one has, again, it's they both have just a standard spring clip. It's got all these nice carbon fiber inlays, 6K. Um, both have excellent finishes, fit, quality control. You're just getting a little bit more with this one because, again, it's a production version versus a mid-tech. So this doesn't have to go through the hands of the maker. Otherwise, it would be more expensive, especially with these features here. Um, and it's not to put one down or to say that one's better. It's just um, kind of a comparison between the two different levels. And, you know, ZT's probably the best production company um, in the US and possibly the world right now as far as making top tier knives and putting in putting them in quite reasonable price ranges. So just some differences, food for thought. Um, but anyhow, again, uh, I'm quite pleased with this knife. Ergos are awesome, fit and finish is great, flipping action, detent, smoothness, um, everything's pretty rocking. So hopefully this helps get the word out there a little bit more. Uh, about this knife and if you keep your eyes out for again some of the more modified ones I mean they're getting pretty crazy some really cool stuff that they can do which just takes it a little bit above and beyond um, what they come out of the factory with so again everything looks everything looks good uh, if you want to try one out I don't think you'll be disappointed just give it a week or two so that you can work out any lock stick and it allows the bearing system to smooth out even more so Anyways, thoughts, questions, comments, concerns, feel free to put them down below. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care.